Last week, we began a, a little series on the life of Joshua, and I've entitled it called Faith for Possessing Your Tomorrows. God has some plans and purposes and promises for your tomorrows. And the only way you can lay hold of it is by using God's heavenly currency, and that's faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So last week we talked about the first aspect of faith, that it's an action. And we read the scripture in Joshua 1, 1, 1, 2, that Joshua was an assistant to Moses, or he was an aide, he was a servant. And I said, a faith that prepares for your future begins by serving someone now. It's an active thing you do. And he served Moses for 40 plus years before he stepped into the calling and purpose that God had for him. Well, today I wanna to talk to you about faith as an attitude, not I just an action, way. but an attitude. So that's my watch. That's Sorry. all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. And it's an attitude that helps us prevail over the past. So if we're gonna have a faith that lays hold of God's tomorrows for us that are good, we have to prevail over the past of our lives. Now, many people live in the past. It's really sad. They let the sunlight of tomorrow shadow, or the, the sunlight of yesterday shadow the promises of God for tomorrow. And so God said something to Joshua that is so pertinent for us. Many of us struggle with things in our past and God knew that Joshua would do the same. So he said something that seems a little morbid unless you really understand what he's saying. And he says in Joshua 1, 1 to 2, let me read it to you. The Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, Joshua knew that, God knew that, but God was trying to tell Joshua something that he needed to know if he was gonna step in and possess the tomorrow, the plan that God had for him. Joshua, God saying, do not let the giant person of Moses overshadow what I have for you to do. So many times we let our past, people in our past, personalities, pain of our past situations, overshadow what God wants to do and it hinders our faith. And God wanted to make sure it wouldn't happen to Joshua because Joshua lived under the shadow of Moses. Now, Joshua's past was a positive past, but for many of us, it's a negative past. And I believe what God was saying to Joshua is what he wants to say to you and me. Don't let the negative aspects, people, pain of your past stop from what I wanna do in your life for tomorrow. It's so important that we know it, believe it, and speak it with our mouths. That's the attitude of faith I'm trying to tell you about. Because a lot of people, they don't know it, they don't believe it, and they don't speak it. You know, the principle of salvation is if we believe in our heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. It's a principle of saving faith. And that same principle of faith can work when prevailing over our past. We have to know it, we have to believe in our hearts, and some of us need to confess it. And so I believe God is saying, Moses, whatever has shaped your life up to now, do not let it have any impact on what I'm gonna do in your life tomorrow. And it's so important that we don't let our past determine our future. At the cross of Jesus Christ, at the cross of Jesus Christ, not only were your sins nailed on the cross, but do you know your past was nailed to the cross? And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are past. Behold, right. all things become new. Second Corinthians 5, 17. But many of us, we do what we shouldn't do. We drive forward in life, looking in the rear view mirror, wondering why we get in accidents. Don't look in the rear view mirror prevail over your past with the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you something. God has said to me many times, that's dead, Paul. Let that issue die. That's a Moses. Leave it. Give that to me. So let me conclude by asking you, who is your Moses? 
or what is your Moses? What is stopping you from stepping into the glorious future that God has for you? It's so important that we understand even the apostle Paul, he had to prevail over the first murder or martyr in the church, Stephen. And he had to deal with his past. And he said this in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Let me read it to you. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize. You know what the prize is? Your future, heaven, fulfilling your call, your life assignment and not Amen. letting anything in your past stop it. That's right. So Joshua prevailed over his past by agreeing, knowing, believing, and confessing Moses is dead. How about you do the same? Who is your Moses? That'll you know tweet, my Moses is dead. What is your Moses? Who is your Moses? I encourage you, know that in Christ it's dead. Believe in your heart that if we be in evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our Father in heaven, our good Father in heaven, give good things to them that ask? He has a good future for you. Believe now and confess right. your Moses is dead. And so I wanna encourage you with that, to believe that your Moses is dead so you can prevail over your past and let the faith of Jesus Christ continue to guide you That's to the right. glorious plan. Yes. Now, this Sunday's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, let me say it again. We've been praying and believing that God will move by his power this Easter Sunday. That's right. Lift and will begin to turn around our nation yes. for his glory. We're praying for our government, our governor, our president, yes. Congress, and that God will give President Trump godly counselors to go in the right direction. Yes. And so we want to thank you so much for just tuning in. Would you do us a favor if you enjoyed this? Would you like it? And would you also share it? Then maybe it will encourage someone during this time of the coronavirus and lift their spirits. The good thing is, is we know it's not going to be forever. No. Nope. It's going to lift. It's going to pass. Nope. It might change the way our social interactions might be a little less kissing. That's right. Handshaking, but. No, no. Well, we're going to close in a word of prayer. Yes. And we're going to bless all of you that are watching. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to your Amen. throne that we may obtain mercy and find grace yes, in this Lord. time of need. We pray for those that are listening, Lord, that you would encourage their faith. Lord, that yes. you would grow their time, their devotional prayers with you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would use the people of yes, ECC Lord. to encourage others yes. to see your hand move in yes. mighty answer to prayer. Yes. We love you, Father. We know that you have a good future for us. Yes. And Lord, we pray that your faith will grow in us and that we'll respond properly, yes. that we will not miss out on the promised land as Joshua didn't either. Yes, we Lord. love you. We love the people, Lord, that you have called into your family. And we pray, Lord, for a wonderful Resurrection Sunday this Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Thank God you. bless you. And happy Easter to you and your family. Amen. Lord bless. Thank you for listening to the teaching from the Word of God. My name is Paul Height. I'm the pastor of Evangelical Christian Church, located at 1325 Watertown Ave in Waterbury, Connecticut. We would love to have you join us and worship Jesus Christ this coming Sunday at 1030. Now may God bless you and may he continue to cause you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ.